so the story of my vocation begins really when I was a young child and uh, I had just finished third grade and the, the private school that I had that I was attending previously finished at, at fourth grade and so I, my parents were looking for another school uh, where I could go, where I could, I could attend classes, but they wanted to be a private school and um, they found Christ the King Catholic School uh, in my hometown of Norfolk, Virginia, and there I began in fourth grade and went all the way through the eighth grade. While I was there, uh, I was uh, one of only uh, two non-Catholics, or three non-Catholics perhaps, uh, in my class, and our days always began with prayer, with the sign of the cross. We met the, we had uh, then the pastor, Father Joseph Lehman, would come and visit us often, and we had daily catechism class and uh, mass as the school. Uh, because I was non-Catholic, obviously, I could not participate to receive Holy Communion, but yet all of my friends uh, in my class went up to receive, to receive Communion. And as any young child in fourth grade, the age of nine or ten, the, the sense of being longing and wanting to be like your friends was very strong. And so after a year of attending school masses and attending catechism class and listening to Father and doing all the things that Catholics do, I went to my parents and I said I wanted to become a Catholic. And my mother and my father, not knowing what that really meant, both of them not being Catholic themselves, uh, went to go speak, uh, my mother actually went to go speak to the principal, Mrs. Sarasi. And she, she told her, well, uh, Mrs. Spencer, you have to speak to Father. So my mother goes to speak to Father Joseph Lehman, and Father Joseph explains to her the whole process of becoming a Catholic. And, and basically I did it. I attended catechism class, I did RCIA, uh, even though I was, I was but 11 years old. And in April of 1994, I became a Catholic. And I attribute my desire to become a Catholic only because I wanted uh, the little white thing. I wanted, I wanted to receive the Eucharist uh, with my classmates. Uh, and that's the story of my conversion to the Catholic faith, but I think it is also uh, integral uh, in the story of my vocation. And I wanted to be a part of something greater than myself. Uh, so I went through high school, and then in the middle of high school, I went to a type of reversion. I, I, I wandered away from going to Sunday Mass as I was a child. And then my grandmother, when I was 15, said, you need, you need to go to church. You need to have some relationship with Christ. And my grandmother, being herself a lapsed Catholic, would every Sunday drive me uh, to church. She herself would sit in the car and wait until Mass was over, and the two of us would go, would go have breakfast. And I remember at that time in my in my life in high school, I had thought about you know becoming a priest, and I was I became very very zealous perhaps uh, in my faith, reading everything uh, that had to do with the saints or the church, and joining. Uh, at that time, there were different uh, different uh, chat groups online, like Fat Mass and things of that nature, and I became a part of those. And and uh, these these are before the days of Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and so I went through high school, going to Mass every Sunday, frequenting the sacraments. I finished high school, still unsure about the priesthood. It was always in the back of my mind, but I decided at that point in my life, after high school, that I wanted to go off to college and to prepare myself for medical school. Uh, in college, uh, I had a great time. I enjoyed, I enjoyed my studies, my biology courses, all the science courses that I, that I was taking at the time. And then after about a year, a semester and a half, I suppose, uh, that desire to become a doctor, that desire to, to, to go on to medical school really, really fell by the wayside. And I, and I realized that the, the impulse uh, that was motivating that decision uh, to become a doctor was really an impulse to, to have money, to have a great house, to have an awesome car, to, to have all these material goods. And, and I, I, the, those things were not, uh, were not uh, fulfilling, you know, even the desire for those things, there was, there was a lack of fulfillment on my part. And so I decided and realized that I did not want to go on to medical school. And that really that's when the, that, that uh, nascent idea, nascent desire to become a priest entered my mind, entered into my heart. And I began to truly think about it. Now my home diocese, uh, I come from Richmond Diocese, um, 
And at the time, I never found, I never was able to find uh, uh, or see or witness a, a true sense of camaraderie amongst amongst the diocesan presbyterate. The good priests, holy priests, wonderful priests, but but knowing my own temperament and my own. Uh, my own, perhaps I could even say, laziness. I I knew that I I needed the structure of a community in order for me to 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 stay on the right path. If if this truly were were vocation from God, and if I were truly called to be the priesthood, that I need the structure of religious life uh, to to keep me there, to keep me on the straight and narrow. Not to mention just the structure of the prayer and 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 the religious living are things that are necessary for me because i will tell you that alone um on my own that i i, w I would not i would not have a very strong prayer life and perhaps for some that's that's a negative thing but but knowing as, as we're told in philosophy know thyself i believe it was aristotle who said the same thing and augustine also reinforces that idea of knowing thyself in order then to to to, to, to continue the road of conversion and to, and to grow in holiness and humbleness and humility rather. Um, so not knowing where to turn and what, what, how, you, how you find these religious communities, I, I went uh, to my pastor, still in the process of discernment and trying to figure out where God is leading me. And I asked him if there was a book or some guide or, or something that has a list of all of the uh, religious communities in the United States. And sure enough, there is. And there was. And, and I found this book. And inside, there was it was basically a phone book of, of all these religious communities in the United States and in Canada. And there was a card for the Mercedarian Friars. I filled it out. I sent it in. All the while, I'm trying to figure out where is God? Is He calling to me, the priesthood? Is He calling me to religious life? And I, I was begging for some sort of sign, you know, a burning bush, uh, a lightning bolt, something, something very dramatic, like you read about in the lives of the saints or in the lives of the prophets of the Old Testament. But nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. And it was the parish secretary, my, at, at my, at my home parish, uh, Peg, who, who said, David, you know. It doesn't happen like that for most people. It doesn't work like that. You have to simply be open to the small signs that God gives you as as your your guideposts in where you are to go and where you are to where you are to be led by God. And sure enough, in the process of my discernment while looking at the Mercedarians, considering other religious communities, I had three individuals, three complete strangers, who in three distinct moments in uh, time and in, throughout throughout the course of, of several months. Uh, were, were indicators that it was uh, the seminary and or religious life to which I was called. And, and then also, you know, the, the, the constant thinking, the daily pondering, the daily questioning. I, I liken, I liken uh, uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit or, or his, or his uh, beckoning at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the call from God to be like one of those telemarketers who constantly call you, constantly tell you the same thing, and every time you say no, they call again. And it's just a constant repeat. And uh, so I went through that period of discernment through about, for about, I guess, a year, two years. I visited the Mercedarians. I found a community of brothers who were on fire for the faith, on love, in love with Jesus and love for the church. And uh, a community of, of, of Catholic men uh, who, who have, over the course of 800 years, maintained their tradition. Um, always, always... Uh, in the with the mind of the with the mind of the church, uh, men who were a habit, men who are who are devoted to the magisteria, men who preach truth, and faith, uh, without without reservation, without one absolute iota of embarrassment. Um, and I found a community with a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous history of of saving souls and working working for the church for the advancement of the faith. Uh, and so, in the course of that. I, I, I simply I simply decided to accept just to say yes you know uh, to jump into the into the deep end of the pool and try to swim and as soon as I said yes to the to the call of God to his voice about becoming a priest and religious that that nagging feeling every day the daily pondering the daily question the daily the daily uh, uh, question mark uh, of my life simply disappeared um, and so I went through the second part 
of, of, our, of, our, of our process. I went and I had the, the various psychological evaluations and I, I continued on with my studies at the university. And in 2005, May of 2005, I graduated with my bachelor's degree, um, bachelor's of science degree. And in August of that same year, I entered uh, as a postulant, August 22nd, 2005, I entered as a postulant in the Order of Mercy. Um, in the course of my my, my life as a mercedarian, both as a, postul as a postulant, as a novice, as a student in simple vows, as a, as, a, as a student in solemn vows, as a priest, I have known several occasions and several, I've had several experiences of God um, that have confirmed uh, my place here in the Order of Mercy. And I can, I can truly say that uh, it has not been easy. Uh, the religious life should not be easy. It's a challenge. It's a call. Doing, giving your life to God, living for Him, bearing witness to Him is not easy. It challenges the world and it challenges ourselves and what we think about the world and what we think about God. But I can truly say that it was one of the, it is the uh, best decision that, that I have made in my life. And I'm truly thankful to God uh, for, for His gift uh, of my vocation. And, and, and I pray that I might continue to serve Him in, in, with all of my weaknesses and with all of my defects um, to the best of my ability and to, and to spread the message of, of mercy, the, the charism of our Holy Father, St. Peter in Alaska, and the spirituality of our Blessed Mother of Mercy uh, to all the world.